as I tell you. In King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, I need to get you and the boy away from here. The rightful king of the ancient British Isles is killed by his dastardly brother Vortigern, who usurps the throne. The magical sword, Excalibur, is lost in the process. Furthermore, the rightful heir, a kid named Arthur, is just two years old at the time, hardly the age to issue decrees, fight wars, and other kingly sorts of duties. Vortigern would have liked to kill Arthur too, but the toddler somehow slips away. Fast forward 20 years, and Arthur, who knows nothing of his royal lineage, has grown into a bit of a hooligan, yet a hooligan with a kind heart. Meanwhile, Excalibur's been discovered stuck in a chunk of rock. Rumor has it that the person who can pull the sword from its stony base is the true king. You can bet that Vortigern is going to try and use that to discover who his nephew really is and get rid of him. Arthurian legends have always had a great deal of magic in them, but this CGI spectacle pushes those mystical elements up a rung or two. And in this context, that makes this a bit of a dark monster movie at times. There's an ultra-huge menacing snake, a grotesque and violent death demon, plus a tentacled monstrosity that responds to human sacrifice. Whether by sword, arrow, or demonic thingy, the body count is considerable here. Plus, there are some ticklish theological issues to deal with. So despite a great deal of swashbuckling heroism, I can only give King Arthur just two and a half round tables out of five for family friendliness. For an in-depth review on this film or anything else at your local box office, be sure to check out PluggedIn.com. Plugging you into the movies, I'm Cheryl Wilhelmy for Focus on the Family's Plugged In Movie Review.